Hello, Perfect Beauties. My name is Daisy. Today I'm going to be talking about getting Botox for my acne scars and why I regret doing it. <laughs> so I did this about three years ago and it was honestly, I think I had like a Groupon for like, um, like a vial of Botox, but I didn't really know what I wanted Botox on. I haven't gotten any Botox just for anti-aging purposes. The only Botox I've gotten is for my acne scars and that was such a small amount. I don't even think it was one vial. I think, I don't know, like I don't know how much they use, but um, she was having trouble finishing up. Like we didn't really know where to put it because my theory is like, I'm 31 years old. Um, yeah, I could get fillers and stuff now. I know a lot of people have started, but I feel like I don't want to do it until I'm like 45. So that way I only use it when I absolutely need to because I don't want to get accustomed to using fillers at such a young age. And then I feel like I would have to get more and more and more the older I get. And it's just like never ending cycle. So I don't want to start until like I absolutely need to, if I even need to anyways, maybe by the time I'm 45, I'm just going to like embrace my age or whatnot. But, um, I wanted to try <laughs> to get Botox for acne scars so I could actually make a video and tell you guys about it. So I did it because I really wanted to make content. I wanted to give you guys the answer and the result, but afterwards the result, like a few months later, I kind of got really busy. I think six months later, I kind of realized the result wasn't that great. And then I just never got around to sharing my story with you. So the surgeon did. So I went there. I wanted her to get rid of the acne scarring, or not acne scarring, but she said that she could, if I bought this like promotion or whatever, that she could help push out the acne scars. Um, Cause I do have indentations from my acne scars. And the thing was, was like she would take the syringe or whatever, she numbed the area and she would just push tiny little um, pushes in the areas I had scars and like pot marks. And so she would put it alongside the scarring along the sides of my face. Um, and so actually initially it looked, it actually looked pretty good like right after it was done. Um, and the issue is, is like the acne scar I have, the scars are super, super tiny. They're like tiny, tiny, tiny little pot marks. It's not like I have one deep indentation. I have a lot of tiny, tiny, not even like, you know, a 10th of a centimeter, like super tiny um, indentations. So it, she has to be super, super careful and fine with like putting the right amount of, I guess, Botox in, right? So she would do that and then like massage it out. So right after my skin's on the sides of my face, it looked a lot plumper. It looked like um, my scarring looked more like freckles than actually indentations because um, all that was left was the actual like outline of the scar. And I was actually pretty happy with it for the day or two after. But what happened over the course of the months, and I'm like very ashamed of this, um, which I haven't really talked about, is the actual filler material, it actually began to slide around my face. So I think with, with fillers and stuff, like over a course of a time, they spread out, they kind of go to different places. Um, that's why they say like after you get your lips done, um, like it's super swollen, but then over time it's gonna like, like slide or like, what do you call it? Move around and like get softer, right? Cause it will have spread. So I felt like the filler had spread from the original acne scar to an area where my skin was smooth. So, <laughs> Um, everything had shifted. And again, my acne scars are super tiny. They're like, you know, a 10th of a centimeter or whatever. Um, and so it would just like move a little bit, which made my face feel more rough and rough in the edges where I didn't have scarring. So it was like, I had scarring, I saw the indentation, and then I had the roughness like right outside the scarring. So it just wasn't a good look. I also do believe that if I smile, I don't know if you can tell, but in a lot of like my YouTube videos or in a lot of um, like Instagrams I do, I have this, I have like, what do you call it? Like an indentation along my temple. And for the longest time I thought it was an acne scar, but it's actually not an acne scar because I don't actually have a scar that's that big, like across like my temple. There is no way that I could have like that big of an acne scar or, an, or uh, acne 
and I really truly believe when I smile sometimes I get like a little crin um, a little indentation on the side of my face and I really do believe that that's because the fillers that were there all kind of smushed into that one section and I don't know how to get it away. I think they can dissolve them, but I'm hoping over time, even though it's been like two to three years, I'm hoping over time it will just like go away on its own. <laughs> but yeah, it really bothers me because now I feel like the scarring on my temples are even more noticeable because um, because of the fillers and they all like accumulated there. And so when I smile, there's this big like indentation on the sides of my temples. So overall, um, I do not recommend fillers for acne scars. I think it could work if you have like a really big indentation in your skin and, um, and you need like a large surface area to spread the filler around. I think that might work. I think the reason why fillers work well for wrinkles and for like lips and stuff is that your skin is like, like when you put filler on your skin, it like needs to spread around, right? You can't just have all of a sudden like one plump spot and one non-plump spot. And I think the great thing about fillers is that you can spread it around. But if you have acne scars like me that are like, like tiny like pot marks on your face, if it moves like even a millimeter, it's gonna look off, <laughs> you know, from your face. So yeah, so that is why I would not recommend it. Um, I'm only glad I only did it once and I'm glad that most of it has faded off, although I'm still upset about the indentations on my face. But I would say like if you want to get rid of acne scars, microneedling is the best way because you're using your body's own natural healing systems. Um, you can also try lasers. Um, for me, lasers did not work any better than microneedling. It it just created a lot of downtime and then I also got like really red spots on my face afterwards and I think that's from the hyperpigmentation of it. Um, I don't know what else they have for acne scars at the moment. I know they do chemical peels. I knew they also do like subcision method. If you have really, really deep acne scars, they can do a subcision method. I think if you do subcision method, maybe the fillers would work for you. Um, and you also have to be careful and go to a reputable plastic surgeon dermatologist because I felt like the lady who was giving me the Botox, a plastic surgeon, because she had this like promotion and Groupon and stuff, I felt like she was trying to push me into services that I didn't need and obviously the Botox did not work out for me. Um, neither did the laser. So you should go to somebody who you trust and actually will give you good advice and not try to push you on treatments or, you know, products just because you know, they'll make money from it. Um, I think that's really, really important in any kind of cosmetic procedure that you get that you go to someone you really trust. Anyways, I just wanted to share with you my experience. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys later.